Have you ever wondered how a leader steps into the shoes of a predecessor as great as Moses? Imagine the weight of that responsibility. The mantle of leadership passed from Moses, a man of extraordinary faith and dedication, to Joshua, a man now tasked with leading a nation. This was no ordinary transition. It marked the beginning of a new era, with Joshua stepping up to embody the role of a new Moses. Joshua wasn't just expected to fill the void left by Moses. He was to guide the people in living according to God's commands. It was a role that required faith, courage, and unyielding commitment. Joshua's leadership was not just about leading a people, but about leading them in obedience to the divine. Now picture this, the Israelites, on the cusp of a monumental journey. They were stepping into the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. This moment was not just significant, it was pivotal. It was the fulfillment of a promise made generations ago, a promise that had sustained the Israelites through years of wandering in the wilderness. But the promised land wasn't handed to them on a silver platter. It was a land occupied, a land that would need to be won. It was a land that would test their resolve, their faith and their obedience. The Israelites were stepping into a new chapter of their story, a chapter filled with challenges, victories and lessons. Joshua, as their leader, would need to guide them through this journey. He would need to inspire them, rally them and at times reprimand them. His leadership would be tested, as would the faith of the Israelites. So the journey began, a journey that would test Joshua's leadership and the faith of the Israelites. Imagine stepping into new territories, only to be met with hostility. What would you do? This was the reality for the Israelites as they entered the Promised Land. The Canaanites, the inhabitants of the land, were far from welcoming. They were determined to protect their homeland, and so the battles began. The Israelites, under Joshua's leadership, faced numerous encounters with this hostile force. Yet, every encounter was an opportunity for them to demonstrate their faith and obedience to God's commands. Victories didn't just fall into their laps. They were hard-fought, strategic, and at times, miraculous. Take the Battle of Jericho, for instance. The Israelites marched around the city for seven days, and on the seventh day, with a great shout and the blast of trumpets, the walls of Jericho fell flat. Now, that's not your typical military strategy, is it? Yet, it was the faith and obedience of the Israelites that led to this miraculous victory. But not all encounters ended in battles. The story of the Gibeonites is a prime example of this. The Gibeonites, a Canaanite people, cleverly deceived the Israelites into making a peace treaty with them. They recognized the power of the Israelites' God and chose alliance over annihilation. This was a strategic move that ensured their survival. And then, there were the other Canaanite kings who formed alliances against Israel, a common strategy in times of war. Yet even against this united front, the Israelites emerged victorious. Each victory, each alliance, was a testament to their faith, to their determination. But the path to victory wasn't without its shadows. How do we grapple with the violence that marked this journey? It's a question that resonates throughout the pages of the book of Joshua, a narrative that is as much a chronicle of triumph as it is a stock account of warfare. The conquest of Canaan was a tumultuous period, a time marked by conflict and bloodshed. Yet it's crucial to understand this within the cultural context of the era. In the ancient world, warfare was a common means of establishing dominance and control. The Israelites, under Joshua's leadership, were no exception. They engaged in battles, not out of a lust for power or territorial gain, but as a way to secure their survival and establish a homeland promised to them by God. However, the violence was not just physical, it was also spiritual. The Canaanites were known for their morally corrupt practices, practices that posed a significant threat to the spiritual integrity of the Israelites. To protect their faith and their covenant with God, they had to resist and sometimes eliminate these influences. It wasn't just about winning battles, it was about preserving their spiritual identity. Yet, this doesn't negate the ethical dilemmas it raises. The narrative of Joshua challenges us to confront uncomfortable truths. 
It asks us to wrestle with the complexities of a world where divine promise and human action intersect, often in violent ways. It forces us to question, how do we reconcile a loving God with the harsh realities of war? The book of Joshua doesn't offer easy answers. Instead, it invites us to grapple with these questions, encouraging us to delve deeper into our understanding of faith, morality, and the human condition. It asks us not to shy away from the shadows, but to confront them, to seek understanding amidst the complexities of life's battles. It's a stark reminder of the complexities of human nature, even within the context of divine intervention. The book of Joshua serves as a poignant testament to the multifaceted nature of victory, the dark side that often accompanies triumph, and the enduring quest for spiritual integrity in the face of ethical dilemmas. In the end, the promised land was divided among the tribes, but what would this mean for their future? With the battles won and the enemies vanquished, Joshua had a task at hand, dividing the promised land among the twelve tribes of Israel. It was a momentous occasion, a turning point in their history. Each tribe received a portion of the land, a place to call their own. This was more than just a division of territory, it was a symbolic gesture, a manifestation of the promises made to their ancestors. Yet as Joshua stood before his people, he knew that this was only the beginning. The land was theirs, yes, but it was the faithfulness to the covenant that would define their future. So, he delivered speeches, urging his fellow Israelites to remain true to God's commands. His words echoed through the valleys and across the plains, a solemn reminder of the covenant they had made with the divine. The echoes of Joshua's speeches linger even today, resonating with readers of the book of Joshua. They serve as a reminder of the covenant between God and his people, a covenant of faith, obedience, and love. This covenant was not just for the Israelites of old, it is for all who seek to follow God's commands. But the book of Joshua also leaves us with a decision to make, a choice that goes beyond the pages of Scripture. It's a decision about our own future, a decision that asks us, will we be faithful to our own covenants? Will we choose obedience over convenience, faith over doubt? These aren't easy questions, nor are they meant to be. They challenge us, push us to examine our own lives, our own choices. They invite us to step into the shoes of the Israelites, to stand at the crossroads of decision just as they did so many millennia ago. The book of Joshua leaves us with a question, a question of faith, of obedience, and of the choices that shape our destiny. And as we ponder these questions, we realize that the book of Joshua isn't just a story of a people and their land. It's a story about us, about our journey, and about the decisions that shape our destiny.